Before I get this video started, I'm taking a summer French course to further my degree in English, and I was doing my homework today, flipping through the French book, and uh, turned one of the pages, and I found this. This is one of the greatest things I've ever experienced. Hey everyone, I'm Trey Guillotine, and a friend of mine asked me to do a Terminator Genesis review video, so here I am. But it's not the video I thought I would be doing. Before I went to go see Terminator Genesis, I was expecting it to suck. I was expecting it to be lame. I was expecting it to be, to basically feel like I felt about Jurassic World, that it tried too hard to recapture the glory of Terminators 1 and 2, and that it would have just so many throwbacks. I thought that this video would be about the huge amount of movies that come out that are basically reboots or continuations of franchises from the 80s and 90s and I'd be all and I'd be ranting about how they need to stop doing old franchises and start doing new original stuff and when I went to go see Terminator Genesis I was pleasantly surprised it was actually a good movie I I know it was completely unexpected, but it was actually a good movie. I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. Uh, the story really hits the ground running. It doesn't waste time trying to rehash things that have already happened because you've seen the trailer, so you know the basic story. Kyle Reese goes back in time to save Sarah Connor, just like in Terminator 1, and they, and they hit those points. But he goes back and he finds that the past has changed, and he's expecting to start the fight with the Terminators in the past, but when he gets there in this movie, the fight's already been happening. It's already been happening for a while with Sarah Connor and her Terminator, which is Arnold Schwarzenegger. It throws Kyle Reese and the audience just into the situation and explaining things as they go, and that's something that this movie did particularly well that I don't really remember the other Terminators, uh, the other Terminator movies doing, is they will have some complicated timey wimey wibbly wobbly sciencey wyancy thing like time travel or how the terminators work or anything else that's you know really very complicated and they do a good job of explaining it as they go while i was expecting the movie to suck there were a few things that going in i was excited to see one was arnold schwarzenegger i was excited to see him back as a terminator uh back in the role i was curious about how they're going to do because he's old now I mean, you, you can't deny it. he's old now, so he can't do all the action stunts he could before, but they still did a great job of making it at least look like he was doing it. If they were using stunt doubles or whatever, it was awesome. They handled his character really well. And then the other thing I was excited about was Matt Smith and Amelia Clark in the movie, because both of those actors, I've only seen them in their one roles. Uh, Amelia Clark as Daenerys Targaryen in Game of Thrones, and Matt Smith as the Eleventh Doctor. So I've only seen them in those roles, so I was really excited to see them do something else to, you know, show their range, to, to put those roles behind them and take on a new role, a new acting style, a new character. So I was interested to see that, just to see what kind of range both of these actors have, because I like them and I'd love to see more of them. And they didn't disappoint. I thought they both did a great job. Uh, Matt Smith, his character was kind of surprising, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. But Amelia Clark was, she's not the Sarah Connor that Linda Hamilton was. You can't recreate Linda Hamilton's Sarah Connor from the original Terminator, so you just can't do it. And it's stupid to try, and I don't feel like they did. She made her own character. She was very, she was very battle ready, but she was also kind of immature. Uh, in a lot of different ways, and that was interesting to see that kind of character in her situation. Um, you know, they talk about uh, you know her fighting her fate because all of this is fated to happen, and she's trying to, and she's angry about that, and she acts like you know a teenager, like you know uh, no one understands me, but it works for her character. Uh, another performance that I really enjoyed in the movie was J.K. Simmons. I had no idea J.K. Simmons was in this movie. You know J.K. Simmons from Spider-Man, and he also did the voice of Tenzin in uh, the Legend of Korra Avatar series. Um, also, if, you've, if you haven't seen Thank You for Smoking, he's in that, but do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen it, go see it. That movie's hysterical. But I've always liked J.K. Simmons as an actor, so I was excited to see him in this, and he was so funny. 
he was he was probably he was probably my favorite character of the entire movie, and he had some of the best one liners. Uh, he wasn't like he, his character wasn't a huge role, but he like his character had its purpose and he played it out, and they didn't try to overuse it or or anything like that. Like he had his purpose, he played it out, and that was it. But it was such a funny role. He was so funny to watch. He had some great lines. So I was I enjoyed seeing that. The movie wasn't perfect. There were actually a few things that, um, even though I thought the movie was good, that I thought that I kind of had issues with. Uh, one of them being the fact that they just completely ignored Terminator 3 and Terminator Salvation. However you feel about those movies, whether you think those movies suck or not, personally, I think Terminator 3 was terrible, and Terminator Salvation, the one with Christian Bale, that one I actually thought was pretty good. Um, but whatever you, however you feel about those movies, you can't deny that those movies happen. They, they are canon, they happen in the Terminator mythos, the events that happen in them should have been at least integrated into the movie or mentioned or brought up with a line of dialogue or something because in Terminator 3, because they had big implications to the series. In Terminator 3 they introduced John Connor's wife and her kind of uh, leading things when John Connor died because they say that John Connor dies in, in the future at some point. Uh, and his wife kind of takes over a little bit. And then in Terminator Salvation, John Connor getting uh, wounded and getting basically organ transplants from a Terminator. And this is kind of a spoiler, but it's in the trailer, so whatever. Uh, in the movie, John Connor kind of becomes a human Terminator. Uh, it's this new kind of Terminator, they explain it in the movie, but he's basically a human Terminator, and going in, I was thinking maybe him having the Terminator organs from Salvation would play into that, and it didn't. They just completely ignored it all. Uh, they, you know, even the way that John met uh, Kyle Reese in Terminator Salvation, which I thought was a great way to introduce those characters to each other, uh, they just completely ignored that. So I was kind of disappointed just in that. Uh, also, the ending, the ending wasn't bad, but it was very much wrapped up in a nice little bow. There were, it, it felt like there weren't a lot of consequences of the things that happened. It was just kind of like, yeah, and happily ever after. Um, so that I kind of had a small issue with, but at the same time, the Terminator, uh, the Terminator series has never really had happy endings, and this is, and this one was clear that it wants to, while it wants to stay true to the Terminator series, it also wants to be its own entity in the Terminator series, and so maybe that's why they did it. I don't know. They totally set it up for a sequel. You know, they had an ominous uh, after credit scene ending, so we'll, I'm sure we'll see more from it, which I don't think would be a bad thing. Uh, if you know, if they make another movie and it's as good as this one was, I would be fine with that. Overall, I thought the movie was good. Uh, going back to, you know, saying how a lot of uh, most movies these days are coming out that are, you know, rehashed franchises from the 80s and 90s and how they need to do something original, uh, while I do strongly feel like that, there are exceptions to the rule, like Dread, like Mad Max Figure Road, and now like Terminator Genesis. There are good movies that come out of these these kind of rehashes of old franchises, but I still feel that movies should strive to be original and do their own thing instead of trying to redo something from the past. But there are exceptions to the rule, and Terminator Genesis, surprisingly enough, was one of them. This month, the Funko giveaway, I'm giving away a Mad Moxie from, Border, from the Borderlands franchise, so leave a comment on this or any of the other videos in July and you enter for a chance to win. Did you see Terminator Genesis and what did you think? Let me know in the comments, follow me on all the internets, like the video, share the video, and please subscribe to my channel so you can geek out some more. Thanks for watching. One, so Captain America, Thor, Hulk.